Hey guys, what's up? So I just want to do an update real quick. Uh, it's it's definitely been a week. <laughs> so to start things off, Monday, uh, I got hit by a car, so that was fun. Uh, <laughs> that definitely scared the shit out of me. Uh, luckily, I'm okay. Only just some scrapes and bruises, but just a little bit of an explanation of what happened. I ride my skateboard to the gym every day, uh, my, my boosted board, so it's an electric skateboard. And I didn't get very far. The gym is probably about three miles away. So I was about maybe a half mile away from my place. I was uh, riding my skateboard along the sidewalk. And you know what? I need a better way of explaining this. Okay, so we're gonna do this real, real quick. We're gonna use these uh, iPhone plugs. <laughs> This is the car, and this is me. Uh, here's the sidewalk right here. I had just crossed the street. Uh, I was on the sidewalk, and there was some road construction, so I went off the sidewalk a little bit because I had no choice. Uh, I was moving along, I was still in the bike lane, and I noticed this car, they were turning this way, or they were attempting to. I never assume someone is going to see me at this point because I've had close calls already. So I slow down. They're still like sitting there. I notice they have two people in their car. So I get closer, closer. They're still staying there. So I kind of assumed that they had seen me. Uh, mistake number one. So I'm going. I kind of like I step on the gas <laughs> from my electric skateboard because I was just like, hey, I really want to get past these people. I don't really 100% trust them. So I stepped on the gas and right when I was in front of them, literally right in front of them, they pulled out, they hit me. I ended up trying to like, it was a Honda Element. So it wasn't the lowest car. So I at least like tried to brace myself, jump a little bit. So I ended up uh, getting hit, going up onto the hood of the car and then flying off that way. And they were like, oh shit, we hit somebody. And then they got out of the car and asked if I was okay. I was wearing like a backpack, a hat, and like everything went flying that way somehow. And um, let's say like, this is my skateboard. That ended up over there somehow. I don't even know, but um, I was okay. My legs and stuff were a little bit bruised up, but uh, yeah, close call. Sorry, that was not like the best method of showing you what happened with these. That's all I have in my hands. Uh, so yeah, I got hit by a car. Uh, it shook me up and I was a little angry because riding my boosted board to the gym is like one of my most relaxing, kind of uh, enjoyable parts of my day. And so I felt like that was kind of taken from me for a bit. I'm still paranoid with cars. I will not cross in front of them. Even if I know that they see me or they like wave to me, I don't care. I like go behind them. They probably think I'm crazy, but I trust nobody. Uh, <laughs> so moving on from that day, I want to give a little bit of an update. I updated you in a vlog, but if you didn't see that vlog, it was kind of long. Uh, I'm getting my balls in December, my jingle balls. So it's like the best Christmas present. And then I have a stricture though, so Dr. Chen is doing this new procedure where he injects like a scar modulator that's made of uh, amniotic membrane into the stricture. I guess he like stretches out the stricture, injects the scar modulator, and it's supposed to prevent things from scarring. And so that's happening December 6th. And then along with the December 6th surgery, I've had some procedures added on. I saw a second opinion. I feel like my camera's really hot. Uh, I saw a second opinion uh, about my arm. If you don't, didn't know I had some surgery on my nerve to try to bring the numbness back from my thumb. I woke up and it was more numb. Uh, so I wanted a second opinion just to like put my mind at rest. Uh, they told me basically uh, the same thing, that it's gonna take a while for the nerve to grow through the graft. And uh, they wanna, you know, give it at least like a good nine months or to a year to see how that how that does if the feeling comes back and that sort of thing uh, but they did offer me some new options regarding 
tightness of the graft, which tightness and appearance really. So he took a look at my arm and according to like how I've healed since I have some discoloration in my graft, he told me that I've, uh, he's like wondering how my graft healed because of the disco discoloration. He says I'm definitely a scar maker. Uh, just looking at how everything is looking currently and I'm over a year post-op. So he's gonna do some uh, fat grafting and they take fat from other parts of your body and they put it underneath your graft. So it kind of helps with the appearance, appearance if you have like a little bit of an indentation between your arm and the graft. Uh, also with the tightness, so he's maybe gonna inject a little bit up in here because I have a lot more tightness around my wrist and uh, maybe a little bit around here for the padding of this nerve. Uh, he also mentioned that he can take in the stretching of this scar. This scar, I don't know if you could tell, it stretched out a little bit for me, so he said he can like bring it in a little bit, it might stretch out again, but they will put like better sutures so that hopefully that won't happen. Uh, so a little bit more of just like a, a little bit more options. Uh, the th one thing that I really enjoyed is, so I just saw Dr. Safa for my arm graft and he took so much time with me. He was incredibly nice. I ended up seeing like three different doctors in one visit and it was just such a breath, a, a breast. <laughs> it was just such a breath of fresh air because uh, just the experiences that I had been having with uh, seeing doctors for my knee, that's another story I'll get into next. Um, but just to have someone really take the time uh, to listen to me, to ask me questions, let me ask questions, and then really express my concerns, it was just a really, really great experience. And they are going to do my fat grafting and all that at the same time that Dr. Chen is going to do my balls and my stricture fix. So I'm going to be a mess, uh, <laughs> especially with like they take the fat from other parts of your body. So it's basically liposuction. So it's going to be painful. It's going to be feeling like I did like a thousand sit-ups uh, since they will be taking it from like the love handle area or the flank as they call it. Uh, and injecting it into my arm. So I'll be feeling pretty bruised up there. I'll also with my arm, oh yeah, I forgot to say, they're gonna be doing a lymph node reroute. So this is something that they've done that they've found help helpful for guys who have had persistent hand swelling. Uh, the hand swelling isn't that bad currently right now. It is always like generally just a little bit more swollen, but especially after like a back and bicep day where I'm like clenching, uh, or when, or at night, or when I wake up in the morning. There, there's not a lot of movement in my arm, so the swelling kind of just pulls into my hand. Uh, they're doing a lymph, re lymph node reroute. I don't know the details of this. I'm not a doctor. I really would like to get more details of it. I've tried like Googling it without much success, so I might have to see if I can get more information from him specifically, but I just thought that was great because hand swelling is not fun. It is annoying, and if you're someone who, uh, who has hand swelling after phalloplasty, then I highly suggest that you mention this to your doctor or you see Dr. Safa. Uh, so yeah, that was the gist of the hand second opinion. When it comes to my knee, I've been having the hardest time finding someone that will actually take me in and treat me. I, I just discovered that uh, I'm part of Sutter Medical Group and they don't do second opinions within their own group, which is really hard if you have an HMO. Luckily, I have a PPO, so I can go outside of the group to get a second opinion. Uh, I don't understand that at all. It's kind of a shitty situation if you ask me. If, you know, you, yeah, uh, I feel like you should be able to switch your doctors no matter what happens, like if you just, even if you feel uncomfortable with the doctor, it's a little bit um, disheartening to think that if I had an HMO, I'd be completely stuck. But moving on from that, I'm seeing a Sutter Independent Physician. Uh, I don't know the difference, like, between a Sutter Independent Physician and uh, just a regular Sutter Physician. Uh, but I, I was did a lot of Google research. I've tried to get into other few different doctors, but their wait times are like in March, or they just don't really know how to treat uh, someone my age with arthritis who is still very active, so it's almost like they have their hands tied a little bit. But I found someone on the internet, Dr. Jamali to be specific, 
He is more sports medicine focused, and uh, so I had my doctor put in a referral to him, and I have an appointment for November 1st, just to know that he was willing to take me on as a patient, and that I have you know an appointment scheduled with him. I just wanted to like hug him. I don't even know him. I've never met him yet. Uh, but just to give me a chance is makes me happy. So I will of course keep you updated on how that goes. Hopefully I've got more options besides paying $2,500 for a stem cell injection. Uh, stem cell injection would actually be ideal for me, but uh, insurance doesn't cover it. So even in like the worst case scenario, I'd have to have like uh, I'd have to have like a partial, sorry, someone's calling me and I'm easily distracted. One second, sorry. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, worst case scenario, uh, if I have to have a partial knee replacement or something along those lines, just to keep my next 15 to 20 years as normal and, and active as possible, then so be it. Uh, but I'd prefer a different doctor to do it compared to the one who I was seeing previously. Um, I'm just looking for a surgeon that treats me like a human being, offers me a little bit more options besides like, stop doing what you're doing. I just don't feel like he was listening to me pertaining to how active I am. Uh, you know, I'm not an elderly patient, which I'm pretty sure he's used to seeing where they just replace hips and knees and then send them on their way or people who are not very active to begin with and are okay with, you know, toning down activities. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap this up. This took forever. I'm sorry, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Uh, peace out, I'll see you next time.